In this video, we will discuss about hypertension in detail. Here you can see the values of blood pressure in normal person in case of pre-hypertension and uh, in case of uh, stage 1 hypertension and stage 2 hypertension. High blood pressure is a major risk factor for stroke, coronary artery disease, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, peripheral arterial disease, vision loss, and chronic kidney disease. High blood pressure is classified as primary, also called as essential hypertension and secondary hypertension. About 90 to 95 percent cases of hypertension are primary. In this type, high blood pressure is due to lifestyle and genetic factors. Lifestyle factors which play an important role in primary or essential hypertension may include excess salt intake, excess body weight, smoking, and alcohol consumption. The remaining 5 to 10 percent of cases are categorized as secondary hypertension, defined as hypertension due to identifiable causes. In secondary hypertension, there is an identifiable cause and present with additional signs and symptoms. Important causes of secondary hypertension are kidney diseases, Cushing's syndrome, hyperthyroidism, renal artery stenosis, coarctation of aorta, pheochromocytoma, hypothyroidism, acromegaly, Cohn's syndrome, hyperparathyroidism. Ambulatory blood pressure monitoring over a 24-hour period is considered more accurate than office-based blood pressure measurement. While talking about signs and symptoms, some people with high blood pressure may present with headaches, especially at the back of head and in the morning. Some people may present with lightheadedness, vertigo, and sometimes tinnitus. Now we will discuss about hypertensive crisis. Highly elevated blood pressure equal to or greater than a systolic of 180 or diastolic blood pressure of 110 millimeter of mercury is called as hypertensive crisis. Hypertensive crisis is a sudden severe increase in blood pressure. Hypertensive crisis is further categorized as hypertensive urgency and hypertensive emergency. In hypertensive urgency, there is no evidence of end organ damage. While talking about hypertensive emergency, there is an evidence of direct damage to one or more organs. Commonly affected organs include the brain, kidney or heart and may present with confusion, drowsiness, chest pain and even breathlessness. Determinants of mean arterial pressure are cardiac output and 
peripheral resistance. Cardiac output depends on stroke volume and heart rate, while peripheral resistance depends on vascular tone. Further, stroke volume depends on preload, myocardial contractility, and afterload. In most people with essential hypertension, increased resistance to blood flow accounts for high pressure while cardiac output remains normal. However, various mechanisms have been proposed for a rise in peripheral resistance in hypertension. Disturbance in the kidneys, salt and water handling, that is abnormalities in the renin angiotensin system or abnormalities of sympathetic nervous system play an important role in increasing peripheral vascular resistance. Hypertension is associated with decreased peripheral venous compliance which results in increased venous return, increase in cardiac preload and ultimately cause diastolic dysfunction. While talking about investigations, in case of kidneys, microscopic urine analysis is performed and protein in the urine is checked and furthermore RFTs are performed. And in case of endocrine system, serum sodium, potassium, calcium and thyroid stimulating hormone is performed. Uh, we will perform fasting blood glucose and lipid profile. While talking about electrocardiogram, testing of uh, ECG is done to see the evidence that heart is under strain from high blood pressure. Moreover, it may show left ventricular hypertrophy. Chest X-ray may demonstrate signs of cardiomegaly or heart failure. Now we will discuss about management of hypertension. Lifestyle modification is very important and it is done initially. And next comes antihypertensive drugs. There are various classes of antihypertensive drugs which can lower blood pressure and uh, these are the drugs which are commonly used and they include thiazide diuretics, calcium channel blockers, AC inhibitors, angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists and beta blockers. Remember that uh, patient's age, condition and end organ damage play an important part in determining dose and type of medication. Now we will talk about diuretics. Diuretics help the kidney to eliminate excess salt and water. These may include loop diuretics, thiazide diuretics, thiazide-like diuretics, and potassium-sparing diuretics.
नेक्स्ट कम्स कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर्स ब्लॉक द एंट्री ऑफ कैल्शियम इन टू द मसल सेल्स इन द आर्ट्री वॉल्स दीज इंक्लूड डाई हाइड्रोपाइरिडीन्स एंड नॉन डाई हाइड्रोपाइरिडीन्स Next comes acyl inhibitors. Acyl inhibitors inhibit the activity of angiotensin converting enzyme, which is responsible for conversion of angiotensin one into angiotensin two, which is a potent vasoconstrictor. These include captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, perindopril, and ramipril. AC inhibitors are more effective at slowing down the decline of kidney function. Next are the angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists. Angiotensin 2 receptor antagonists work by antagonizing the activation of angiotensin receptors. beta blockers here you can see the mixed alpha and beta blockers and these include carvedilol and labetalol remember that beta blockers are no longer recommended as first line treatment Among renin inhibitors, you can see aliskyrin. Next one is uh, aldosterone receptor antagonist, and these include aplarinone and spironolactone. Remember that both are used in the treatment of heart failure and resistant hypertension. Next comes alpha-2 adrenergic receptor agonists. Central alpha agonists lower blood pressure by stimulating alpha receptors in the brain, which dilate peripheral arteries. Central alpha agonists are usually prescribed when all other antihypertensive medications have failed. These include clonidine and methyl dopa. Age can affect the choice of medications. Guidelines suggest that patients over the age of 55 years should be considered for calcium channel blockers or thiazide diuretics. Anxiety can be improved by the use of beta blockers. Asthma can be worsened by the use of beta blockers. AC inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers have been shown to prevent the kidney and retinal complications of diabetes. Beta blockers and non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers should not be used in patients with heart block greater than first degree. In pregnancy, although alpha methyl dopa is considered as first line, however, labetalol and metoprolol are also acceptable. Thanks for watching. Like and share our videos.